Hi, my name is Sudarshan Krishnamurthy, Chris. I am the Senior Director of Development. I'm going to be talking about the Asset Lifecycle Management Strategy and Roadmap. Uh, before I touch upon the Asset Lifecycle Management um, Investment Priorities, let me briefly talk about the Oracle eBusiness Suite Strategy and Roadmap. Uh, we have been focused on continuing innovation within the eBusiness Suite, and we have had many releases over the past years, uh, the most recent one being 1224, which was released in August of 2014. Our investment priorities as far as eBusiness Suite is concerned is focused on these three areas, user experience innovation, functional innovation, and operational efficiencies. We have had many new releases, both on top of 12.13 as well as 12.2 plus code lines. Um, a set of Oracle extensions, EBS extensions for Oracle Endica, a bunch of smartphone applications, and in-memory applications. On the Oracle applications eBusiness Suite Asset Lifecycle Management, the current release and roadmap is as follows. Uh, in line with the investment priorities, we have done a, a lot of usability improvements by taking selective Oracle Forms functionality into OA framework. We have also added support for linear asset management and enhanced safety management uh, features as part of 12.2.4. In addition to that, we have done a set of customer-driven enhancements especially focused towards the utility industry. What's coming in the next a few uh, zero to 12 months are more mobile apps, more usability improvements, uh, improvements in the uh, linear asset management functionality and more customer driven enhancements. So the coming to the asset lifecycle management investment priorities, again, the focus is exp user experience innovation, functional innovation, and operational efficiency. As far as user experience innovation goes, we have done it in a four-pronged approach. On one side, we have the Oracle EBS extensions for Oracle Endica, a set of smartphone applications, and a tablet-optimized uh, apps, as well as simplified user interfaces. Oracle eBusiness Suite extensions for Oracle Endeka. Users need a lot of answers, and it's often difficult to get to them and to make meaningful decisions quickly. More time is spent on tactical fact gathering versus strategic dis uh, decision making activities. Oracle's solution to this problem is Oracle EBS extensions for Oracle Endeka. Using in memory technology, it provides a rich, intuitive UI experience and enables users to measure, drill, and act with exceptional look and feel. Oracle EBS extension for Oracle Endeka are fully integrated from a security and UI perspective, which means the users have access to the same EBS records from within Endeka. When users need to take action, it is seamless to take that action. Oracle EBS extensions for Endeka will drive productivity and provide an information-driven path to quick answers when you need to make quick decisions. So I'm a maintenance planner, and I'm logging into eBusiness Suite self-service uh, management pages for, um, for EAM. And when I have Endica enabled, and this is the screen which I log into. This uh, page basically contains all the information which I need to make uh, to find the answers for the questions which I have very quickly and to make decisions quickly. Uh, it has a KPI bar, which very easily helps me identify my key metrics. In this case, if I, had, or if I was monitoring schedule compliance and I had a tolerance limit of 50%, and I can very quickly identify that my schedule compliance is not um, in line with my expectation. So I could further navigate and figure out what else uh, could be causing, uh, could be the reason for the schedule compliance not being in line. It, it also has uh, tag clouds. These tag clouds basically help identify what activities are 
done more frequently within my organization. It comes with a set of graphs which uh, allows me to get information regarding uh, the data, which helps me make my decisions uh, much faster. One of the highlights of the Endeka extension is its search facility. Uh, it provides a familiar consumer search experience. Uh, you don't, the user does not need to know whether the data lies in structured or unstructured format. They don't need to have an idea about what fields or attribute they are searching for. For example, if I just you try to search for the word battery, and I, as I start typing the word, the word battery, it immediately, the system immediately using in-memory technology brings in all the matching uh, records uh, across the entire um, EAM uh, which match the word battery. It could be an activity, it could be an asset description, or it could be even inside an attachment, like an unstructured data. It, it presents to me that information right then and there. Uh, each conversation you have with your data uh, helps you ask the next question you want. You have a set of filters which allow you to narrow down the results uh, which you see based on your filter condition. Uh, there is a result set table which presents a summary of all the work order information which you need. And from here, if you want to take an action, it's pretty straightforward to just click on the link and it, you have a seamless navigation into the transaction page um, and uh, for you to be able to update or add the required information. So the next uh, section as far as uh, user experience innovation goes is the smartphone application. Oracle Maintenance for Oracle eBusiness Suite, that's the uh, smartphone app we have released uh, just recently. Uh, it's mainly focused for technicians who can view and execute maintenance work on the go. Uh, it's available on iOS. Its um, Android version is uh, coming very soon. Uh, it's, app, it's available on top of 12.13 as well as 12.24. Uh, you, users don't need any additional, uh, there's no additional cost as long as the users are um, like, you know, licensed for the uh, Oracle Enterprise Asset Management based product. The mobile maintenance app, it's, uh, as, as I mentioned, it's mainly for technicians to view and execute work on the go. Our strategy has been not to duplicate the entire application on the mobile device, but to identify those key functions which help the users to basically perform their uh, activities on the go and help productivity, improve productivity. In this case, the key functions which the eBusiness Suite uh, uh, maintenance app supports are basically helping the users, the, the technicians view and complete assigned work, including actions like issuing material, charging time, searching for assets and work orders, um, completing operations or work orders, uh, viewing the asset summary information, uh, including work history, failure details, and uh, meter readings and location. It also helps uh, recording the asset meter readings and help create sample, uh, simple work orders as work and work requests. <coughs> as soon as the user logs into the app, the first screen they are presented uh, is completely configurable by the user. In this case, I'm a technician. I'm playing the role of a technician. And uh, what I have configured is the list of operations assigned to me as my default page. Uh, as soon as uh, I land into that page, I can use the springboard in order to navigate to the other areas like work orders, work requests, assets, and other places. So going uh, further details into the, um, some of the screens of the uh, mobile app, in this case, I'm reviewing my operations, the list of operations which are assigned to me. I can click on a particular row, get into its details, perform actions like completing the operation or charging time. I can click on an icon to view the material requirements. I can um, go to the details of the material requirements and perform actions like issuing the material. Work order details and actions. I can um, review the list of work orders or view overdue work for my department, um, view the details of that work order, complete the work order. Or like while uh, completing the work order, I can capture information like failure and meter readings too. 
The other areas, like you now I'm a technician, I'm, I've been assigned uh, work on a set of assets. I can quickly review the asset details, like the uh, asset work history, uh, uh, take, take actions like creating a work order or a work request for that particular asset, or even add meter readings. Search. Um, search is enabled either like you know, using predefined queries, like for example, you can review your my work, all the work orders assigned to you, or overview work within your department. Uh, you can even search by scanning a uh, barcode for an asset. Some of the device functions which uh, the app supports is the ability to use the camera to do a barcode search, um, the ability to like you know, locate an asset on the map, and attach pictures as um, uh, when creating work orders or work requests. Moving along on the theme of, uh, of user experience innovation comes the tablet optimization. All of the eBusiness Suite self-service applications uh, or self-service pages are certified on the iOS Safari browser and are accessible through any Mac or, or even the iPad. In addition to that, there have been a lot of innovations done on the OA framework layer in order to support uh, tablet optimization. Uh, this is the new home page in 12.2.4, which comes with a lot of, um, of user-friendly icons and easy way of navigation into the uh, respective functions, um, using uh, which, which basically is um, optimized for a tablet kind of device too. Simplified user interface. That's the fourth uh, area in which we have uh, uh, invested as far as user experience innovation goes. Um, we have taken a lot of our uh, uh, Oracle Forms-based functions and features and tried to move it into OA framework in order to make it uh, take advantage of all the innovations happening at the OA framework layer. Moving along on the um, uh, investment uh, priorities, as far as functional innovation is concerned, um, 12 to 4 comes with a lot of new features and uh, new um, uh, enhancements, customer-driven enhancements. Uh, the significant of them is what we call the support for linear asset management. Uh, with the, till now, um, EAM was uh, mainly focused on supporting discrete asset management, but uh, with this uh, 12 to 4, you have the support for linear assets. Uh, there is a, a dedicated session for doing a deep dive on linear assets. I strongly recommend you take advantage of uh, reviewing that for more information. Uh, as far as the linear asset definition is concerned, um, it, uh, we have also enhanced the GIS integration, the already existing integration with Esri and Google Maps has been enhanced multifold in order to help uh, with the visualization of linear assets and work execution using a map interface. Not only this, in addition to this, we have uh, the dynamic asset routes and flexible costing feature added um, not only uh, specific to linear assets, but also available for discrete assets. In addition to that, 12.2 comes with a bunch of safety, enhanced safety management uh, for features. The linear asset management, um, it's a new feature. It comes integrated with the existing EAM with enhanced GIS capability. It allows you to perform uh, uh, work based on uh, like using a map interface. I'll walk through a set of screens which basically highlight how easy or how simple is it to perform work using the map, map workbench. <coughs> So here is the map uh, visualization. Um, it could be an Esri map, or it, you could use Oracle Spatial, eLocation, um, uh, Google Maps. Uh, but any, any, using any of your existing map interfaces, um, you would be able to visualize linear assets on the map query for them and perform certain actions. Like I'm in a maintenance planner and I get a call saying that uh, there is uh, some work which needs to be done on uh, so a particular segment of my linear asset. Let's say my linear asset is a road uh, which spans for a uh, uh, certain number of miles. But all the information I have is a reference point one and reference point two. Uh, in this case, uh, um, between uh, a thousand feet uh, from the milestone M2 and um, uh, 2,000 feet before milestone uh, SL2. 
So I can very easily query that information on the map and be able to click on it and uh, perform the action to create a work order. So the, the second use case is uh, being able to take advantage of the relationship between linear assets and discrete assets, linear assets and elements, uh, or linear assets and linear assets themselves. Um, in this case, I'm, um, like an, I need to create a work order for a pothole on a highway which is close to a particular uh, place called Victory Boulevard. Very easily, I can query up this information and then uh, perform the work, uh, work order creation right there. Um, also, the map um, viewer also allows you to uh, define your own user-defined functions. Uh, like for example, I have queried up my linear asset and I'm focusing on a particular section and I want to find out all the open work orders for this particular uh, segment of my linear asset. Or I want to uh, like, uh, review all the closed work orders. Uh, who are the resources who are working on it? I can, I can basically build my own user-defined functions and add them to the toolbar. Uh, to take advantage of the flexibility the linear asset work uh, uh, map workbench gives you. The final uh, investment priority as far as uh, eBusiness Suite is concerned is um, on the operational efficiency. Uh, there's a lot of um, um, new things added at the technology layer which basically help drive great end user pro productivity, uh, reduce the cost of ownership and increase agility and lower integration costs. The uh, signature feature for this is the online patching. Uh, the online patching in 12.2 allows the users to remain online while the patches are being applied. The downtime is basically limited to a short cutover period. The maintenance window is predictable. So critical business, like you know, if my business is uh, 24 by 7 and uh, I, I cannot afford a downtime, then critical business operations and re revenue generation activities can continue during the patching cycle. All of this is possible due to uh, an uptake of a database feature called Oracle 11G R2 edition-based redefinition features, which supports online patching. As I said, the advantage it gives you is your users need not log out or need not uh, can continue to be on the system while the patching is uh, happening. So with that, I uh, conclude uh, my session. Thank you very much.